Okay, so we have learned a few things about forces and we've learned how to draw a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on an object. So we're going to take this story of a car. The car is going to start at rest at say a red light, the light turns green, it speeds up, it goes at a constant velocity for a while, and then in step four maybe a teenager wanders in front of the road and the driver thinks for a second and pauses and eventually decides to slam on the brakes because they don't want to hit the teenager, but they, they think about it. They think about it for a second. Anyway, the car eventually is at rest. So what are the forces going to be on the car at any given point, and how are they going to relate to each other in terms of size, and how are they going to change, how are they going to be responsible for the car's motion? So let's take the car at the red light. That's pretty easy. What forces are there on the car? Is there gravity? Of course, there's always gravity. No problem, I'm going to call that at G. What other forces on there on the car? The car is resting on a surface, that's why I've drawn the dotted line. The car is on the ground, so that means there's going to be a normal force. And the normal force is going to be up. It's going to be perpendicular to the surface, 90 degrees to the surface. It's always 90 degrees, that's normal, that's why it's called the normal force. Okay, any other forces? Is there an applied force? Is anyone pushing on the car? It's just sitting there. Is there any friction on the car? No, there's no one pushing, so there's no need for friction. There's no rope to pull on it, it's not moving, there's no air resistance, there's no nothing. So that's the whole diagram. Then the only question is, are the forces balanced or not? The car is at rest, the acceleration is equal to zero, and therefore all the forces have to be balanced. So slashy slashy. So maybe I should make this guy a little bigger so it looks a little more balanced. They're going to be equal and opposites. No acceleration. In this question, the car is going to start accelerating to the right though, so I am going to call to the right the x direction. Even though right now it's not accelerating anywhere, it's about to accelerate that way. So I'm going to call that way. When I know the way something accelerates, I like to call that the x direction. So now the light goes green and the car starts speeding up. What forces are there on the car? Well, first of all, have any of the other forces changed? Gravity is still there, and gravity hasn't gotten any bigger, hasn't changed. It's on a flat level ground. It's not sinking into the ground, so the ground must be still pushing up on the car with the same force as it was before. So they're still at N. And those two are going to be equal. I just thought about it. They're balanced. The car is not accelerating up or down. No one else is pushing on it. I'm not just assuming that Fn is equal to Fg because it's not always true. In this case, they're going to be the same. Okay, okay. But they're not always equal. What other forces must there be? Obviously, the car is accelerating to the right, so something must be pushing it to the right. So we're going to right now just call that Fa. Later, when we learn Newton's third law, we'll think a little more about what that actually is. But we haven't even learned Newton's first law yet, have we? So there's some push. Let's say the engine pushes on the car to the right, and that's why the car is accelerating this way. Well, not just because there's a push, because of course there's also friction on the car. There's friction, there's air resistance, there's friction in the, in the axle of things. But the friction is going to be less than the air resistance. So Fa is going to be greater than Ff, which is why it's going to accelerate to the right. If the car is going to accelerate in that direction, then the forces in that direction have to be bigger than the forces in the other direction. I didn't space myself out here very well, did I? Step number three, the car is at constant velocity. So the car was speeding up, the guy was pushing down on the gas, the driver, there was this big applied force which was bigger than friction. But eventually the car stopped speeding up. Is there still gravity on the car? Of course there is. And there's still a normal force. And we're not shocked to see that Fn and Fg are still equal to each other, that's okay. But what's gonna happen now? Because the car is moving, isn't it? The car is moving this way, so there's still going to be friction opposing the motion. There's still going to be friction opposing the motion, but is the engine still on? The engine's still running and you're still pushing on the gas, but maybe you don't have the gas pedal pushed down as much as you did before. Friction has eased off. The car has maybe sped up till it's hit the speed limit, and now the driver has eased off the gas, and applied force is going to be a lot smaller. And the acceleration is equal to zero, so FA and FF are going to have to be equal. And that's what's going to make the car go at this, in this direction at a constant velocity. Because the forces are all balanced. It's not accelerating up or down, it's not accelerating left or right. 
one more thing I guess I could point out is that the force of friction is the same as it was before. Cars are complicated things, so there's air resistance, there's friction between the tires and the ground, there's friction between the axles and the, and the wheels, and, and so it's complicated. But I hope you sort of understand what I'm saying. The friction stayed the same and the applied force decreased. But then in step four, the teenager wanders in front of the road, and the teenager didn't even look up from his phone. So the driver just thinks for one second, if I had to tell a judge that the kid just walked out in front of me and I had no chance to avoid a collision, would the judge believe me? And the judge probably would believe me. Because the judge has probably driven on the streets and said, oh, I really wish I... No, not wish. That's wrong. Anyway, the driver does because he's a good human being beside the slam on the brakes. So there's still gravity as the car is slamming on the brakes, and that's going to still be equal to the normal force. No problem. Nothing's changed in the y direction. The y force is balanced the whole time. But now, the applied force is gone, isn't it? Because the driver took his foot off the gas and hit it on the brakes. So there's friction, but there's a lot more friction than there was before. There's nothing making the car go forward, but it's still going forward, isn't it? The car is still moving this way but it's accelerating backwards. Because there's this unbalanced force of friction going backwards. So it's going forward, it's accelerating backwards, and therefore slowing down. And as it slows down, eventually it comes to a stop. And as soon as it comes to a stop, friction disappears. Because friction is trying to oppose the motion. It's trying to oppose slippage, technically. It's trying to fight the motion of the car. And as soon as the car comes to a stop, friction is not needed. So A will be zero, and V is zero, and the car is at rest, just like it was before. But the interesting thing to understand here, really, I think, is number three. That even if the car moves at a constant speed, all the forces are still balanced. They still add up to zero. 